I'm Eric Latois from Latois and Law, and this video is being brought to you by Commentary Creations. I'm your three-minute lawyer. This is Halloween time, and around this time, there's a lot of good movies that come out and replayed, Hocus Pocus, Witches of Eastwick, and other movies. And what we're going to talk about today is the Salem Witch Club. So let's go back to 1692. And during that time in society, it was a time of extreme religious practicing. And if you weren't part of the church, you were part of the problem. And during that time, the pastor's niece and daughter became afflicted with some sort of hallucination and started suffering from some sort of medical issue. What did they decide? Must be witchcraft. And what they did was they picked on three women who were kind of like outcasts in society. And on a side note, this is how we get today in today's society when someone says this is a witch hunt. That's usually referring to what happens when someone is not part of the end group and there are people going after them. So now there were three women, one of them was Tatuba, and what happened was they were put on trial for witchcraft. And during that time, believe it or not, if you just said I'm a witch and you just confessed, which Tatuba did because she was smart and did not want to be executed, then you were always forgiven. But if you decided to maintain your innocence and you went to trial and you lost, well, what took place was you ended up executed. And so during that time period, they allowed something in the evidence called spectral evidence, which is when we look at today's society and the justice system, we believe in due process. We believe in when someone accuses you of a crime, you have a right to cross-examine that evidence, you have a right to fight for yourself. But imagine that the evidence against you is someone saying, she came to me in my dreams, she haunted me, she possessed me, she gave me these convulsions. A person's not actually able to kind of defend against the supernatural. And what would happen is these individuals were being found guilty left and right. And now it became a witch hunt where everybody was being accused of being a witch. At some point, there was over 200 people that were in jail because of this, because everybody was accusing everyone. Neighbors were turning on everyone. And that's pretty much what they were doing. They were having these trials with this kind of hocus pocus evidence and people were being found guilty. Well, eventually it got around to the governor's wife. Once the governor's wife got accused of being a witch, all of a sudden they say, wait, hold on, we got a time out here. This is just getting too crazy and too out of hand. And what they did say, we're gonna do away with this spectral evidence, this evidence of this hocus pocus and these visions coming into me in the middle of the night, making accusing this person of a witch. And then what they did was, once they got rid of that, kind of the went through process and people had ability to actually defend themselves, started to come back into the justice system. Well, it went from 200 people being in jail to nobody, people being pardoned, people being forgiven, and people's names being cleared. So let that be a lesson, going back to 1692. We all have a right to due process. We all have a right to defend ourselves against real evidence. And had they done that from the beginning, maybe some of which trials wouldn't even be a thing. Regular Toyson, thank you.